So good morning, everyone. This is Ifat, your G Plus go to gal, and uh, today we have such a treat with Ryan Lee. He is the master of recurring revenue and uh, membership sites, and even a, a new product. Is it new, Ryan? Uh, how to make a thousand dollars a day? Um, it's it's pretty new. It's it's one of my new, yeah. Well, it's definitely my newest premium program. So it was it was from a few months ago, right? So if you are watching this hangout on this website. Um, you will see um, a link right there where you can get it for free. So just uh, opt in and get that and get started with making money. But before we do that, um, I want to get to know Ryan a little bit better. So Ryan, uh, I watched your videos and you are kind of like a very straightforward guy, and which is very unique, right, to the internet marketing where everybody's kind of like just trying to sell stuff. You're more about engagements and relationship and long-term uh, life of the customer. So how did you... How did you dive into it, and how did you discover that this is actually the way to go, building a relationship rather than just like selling products? Well, that's a good question, and to be honest, that's what I've done since day one. I mean, I, I've always been about building relationships because that's just what what it seemed to make sense. When I had my, you know, I actually had a business offline right before the internet, uh, and I had a personal training company, and the way I got clients was engaging, was talking to them, especially like when I worked at a gym going over to someone, helping them with an exercise. How can I help you? Do you want to see this? As opposed to, you know, seeing them work out. Hi, how you doing? I'm Ryan. Do you want to buy one session or ten sessions? Like, what, what are you talking about? So, and my first job out of college was in a children's rehab hospital. So, it was all about relationships and helping people. And that's how my dad built his, he used to own a retail store, a yarn business. And he was always engaging the customers and talking and being friendly. And it just seemed to me that's the way you build a business as opposed to just trying to sell so hard and then the churn and burn and get more people in and kind of rent, you know, there's a, a, one guy who said to me, you know, extract as much money from them as possible. And that just never felt right to me. And uh, I've been able to, I've been blessed with just a lot of success doing it the way I'm doing it. I've been teaching other people how to emulate me, how to kind of copy what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of, that, that's been the whole method. And it started out in the fitness world. Gone beyond that, beyond fitness professionals, and now just helping everyone. Uh, but it, it's, it's such a better way to sell. <laughs> Why? Well, which is funny because it's uh, such a better way to even have like a relationship, right? Where it's the most of the fun is right. It's not just like that one-time sell. It's actually what they bring to the table. Yeah, yeah. It's it's well. That's the thing. It's not about the one-time sell, uh, and that's where a lot of people make the mistake. They they do the formula and they say. Okay, how much can I get right away? You know, the minute I meet them, I'm going to try to sell them something. And I would rather take my time a little bit, establish because now it's all about, you know, do they, are they going to do business with you if they know, like, and trust you? So you've got to take the time to develop that relationship. And my good friend Chris Farrell does the same thing. And a lot of people, it's it's kind of like the next wave of online marketers. They're discovering that, hey, you know, you can try to sell someone right off the bat and use manipulation and use NLP and use all these techniques. You know, and, hey, put the bar here and it's going to increase 1% and all these things. But the reality is then you – oh, by the way, did I lose you? No, no, no. You're good. Yeah. Oh, all of a sudden I saw a video of like a woman speaking. And I was, it's my first Google Hangout. I don't know what the hell's going on. But, uh, <laughs> so it, it's been uh, – I, I lost my I lost my train of thought. I saw some like kind of weird. It's from right, off. jumping in. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about. Uh, but yeah, it, it's definitely a better way to start because. And then also, when you have that relationship, people are going to stay a, a much longer, as opposed to the other model. You get them in, you get as much money as possible. They feel like, oh, that didn't really feel good. They're not going to come back. They're not going to buy more. And most of my business comes from referrals and word of mouth. So. My, I literally turn my customers into my marketing force because they go out, they go on Facebook, they tell their friends, oh my God, you got to get this program by Ryan because it actually works and he cares and he's on, his fi he's on my blog. I mean, I answer every comment on my blog. Whereas wow. most, yeah, most people don't take the time. Right. I, do free, I do free speed coaching on Facebook because you know, I'm confident in my mastery of the material. And if you don't feel good about your material, if you're not putting yourself out there, people are going to know and they're going to they're gonna see through that and they're not going to invest in you. So, uh, so, so I think my first question is, um, when you're looking at online marketing, right, there are two ways of doing this. Um, there's the one product sale, the big launch, right, mm -hmm. the launching formula, and you work towards it, and you have the affiliates, and a million dollar a day thing. And yeah. then you have the um, membership sites, which is more work, but it's more steady recurring income. So which model do you think is the best? 
Um, well, excuse me as I take a, my jug of water. <laughs> got to always hide. By the way, that's another thing. You got to always, you got to stay fit and hydrated. Yeah. Um, all right. So the answer to the question is both. <laughs> so here, here's the thing. You know, look, a launch is great. If you can get a lot of people, and for those of you not familiar with the launch, uh, and a guy I've known for years, Jeff Walker, has, has kind of made this product launch formula where it's you basically you get affiliates, you get people to rec you recruit, you do this two or three video process, and you get everyone to buy at the same time. It's great if people participate because you can build a list quickly, you can make a lot of money quickly, um, and you could start a business. However, it's not that simple because it relies on you recruiting other affiliates. And other affiliates are going to say, well, if I don't know you, I'm probably not going to promote or I'll promote you, but you, you must what's called reciprocate. Reciprocate means I'll mail for you, but you must mail for me. And this is where I've kind of drawn the line and why I don't do a lot of big launches anymore because I, don't, I never promise I'm going to reciprocate. And Because I'll say to them, look, I don't know what product you're going to create, so how can I promise I'm going to promote you to my list? And why? this again goes back to that initial thing. It's about trust. And if I send my list to a product that's crap and the guy scams them and takes their money, it looks bad on me and they're never going to trust me again. So I won't do it. So therefore, a lot of people won't promote me and I'm fine with that. I've, I've taken less money, but that's cool. Um, now, in, t in terms of continuity programs, I love con that's what I live by, these recurring revenue. Anyone, anytime you're delivering a lot of value and people can pay you month after month, you don't have to rely on, you know. The one-time sale. Yeah, because you're only as good as your last sale. Because if you think about it, Let's say you have, I don't know, na name a market, if I, name any market. Um, online market, um, Google Plus, Hangout, uh, webinars. Okay, Google Plus. Okay, let's say you did a product about Google Plus and it's an ebook, right? If you sell it on ClickBank and you sell it for, uh, throw out a price. $29.99. $29.95. Okay, so it's, it's $29.95. Okay, uh, so you do, you, you do great. Last month you work hard, you sell like three a day. So that's like around 100 units, right? 100 times times 30 bucks is $3,000, right? Yeah. Around. Yeah. That's great. So you made $3,000 last month. But now, come January 1st, you're back at zero. Right. You're actually not at zero. You're negative because you still have web hosting costs and all the other costs. And, you know, you, you get your hair done. You get glass. You get all this cool stuff going. So you, you're now negative. Um, however, instead of getting those 100 people to spend one time 30, now imagine you get those 100 people getting the Google Plus Inner Circle or coaching program or Google Plus video of the month or whatever at twenty nine ninety five per month, you made month one you're at three thousand. Starting January first, you know you're gonna bill for three thousand. There's gonna be some cancellations, but all you have to do is keep them happy. It shifts everything. It shifts from always, oh my God, I gotta get new people, new people, new people. And everyone gets wrapped up in this, where's the push button software? How do I get more traffic with Google Plus? How do I get more traffic with Facebook? How do I and they're they're stressed out where I can go away for two, three months knowing that I have tens of thousands of people in my programs that are happy. So it just shifts from always getting them to just taking care of them. Um, now, I, the reason I say both, if you can combine a big launch with a continuity, I did that with one program where I got um, 20, about 23 or 2,400 people in the first week in, my, in one of my coaching programs, which was $97 a month. Um, so big launch and then you know $230,000 a month in revenue. So that's kind of the best of both worlds if you if you can combine those. So that's why. Well, but you you okay? So you there's so many questions here. One, you are in so many niches. You're in the fitness and in the health and in the online uh, training marketing, right? And um, I don't know what other else, but I know you like have a bunch of them. And how do you do? You have a continuity program, like a membership program for each one of them? Uh, no, and, and I have. I've I've sold a lot of them off. Um, our big, the, the big thing I have in the health and fitness space is our supplement company now. So I've had a lot of uh, websites that I sold off um, and basically funneled a lot of those people into our supplement. But that is continuity because it's a monthly billing. And most of the people are on monthly billing in that program. So that's, that's it in terms of the health and fitness space. And I do have some products. They're not all continuity anymore. Again, it, was, it got to the point where it was a lot to manage. So I had partners take them and then I sold them off. Um, and now my continuity programs in the health space are supplements, and in the marketing space are, is my founder fly and some of these new programs I'm launching. And so you, most of your time, where do you, where do you invest most of your time? In the membership side or in coming up with new, new products? Uh, that's a great question. It, it's, oh, I hear a little bit of an echo. Should I lower my, uh, 
No, you're fine. I keep and hearing. I hear you fine. I keep hearing. Ding! It's just this. It's just oh, straight. okay. So when it, when someone new comes in, it gives yeah. you like a little beep thing. Oh, awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I I feel like I'm about to have dinner. It's like the ding ding dinner bell. <laughs> uh, so oh yeah. So how do I spend my well? I'll, you want me to just kind of break break down like for a minute, like my day? Mm -hmm. What it looks like? Okay. Um, I have and four. I'll tell you why, Ryan. Because I think you know. So the the idea out there is that you build this, you know great income business and then you retire you just do your fun stuff right but um, it seems to me that if this is your passion then you don't want to quit working you just want to keep doing this and right. your day is filled with stuff so what is yeah, the no, day of never. a multi-million dollar business yeah, yeah no I would and I would yeah I, I literally love doing this like I would don't tell anyone I would do this for free but I really I really enjoy it um, typical day I have four young kids so we don't set the alarm they're our natural alarm clock usually <laughs> One or two of the kids is in our bed and come in the middle of the night. So I don't know. I get kicked in the face. That's usually how I wake up at like 7 in the morning, help the kids get ready for, for school, shower them, all that fun stuff. And then um, every morning I go to Starbucks or Barnes & Noble, some, some place where I can get away from an office. And I work from 9 to noon, and that's like my focus work time. No Skype, no interviews. As you know, this is noon, my time. So I don't do anything before noon, no structured calls or anything. It's... It's usually first thing I'll do is like write a blog post, send that email to my list, update it in social media and syndication, and then start working on either product creation, updating my membership site, um, working on sales copy for other products, some of the supplement stuff, some of the promotions we're doing. Uh, I'm, I'm, I just love the creation process, so working on new programs, and that, that's again the three hours of focused time that I'll have lunch, and then the afternoon is when I usually schedule um, interviews, coaching programs, uh, like where I'll, where I'll deliver coaching for people who pay. Uh, I go to a movie once a week by myself like a crazy psychopath, um, just because I love it. I mean, I just love movies. And by the way, that's a, good, that's a good way to get stuff done, is if you give yourself little rewards and treats each day, you know you're going to work hard. To, so if I know, okay, there's a 3 o'clock movie starting, and I have a bunch of things to do, I'm going to get that stuff done by 3 o'clock, because I want to oh. treat myself. But... And, and then in the afternoons is when I usually go to gym at like 3.30. I'll get a massage once a week. But the afternoons are pretty free. And I, you know, I coach, I volunteer coach kindergarten soccer and third grade lacrosse with my kids. So all that kind of stuff. So afternoons are a little bit more flex time. But the morning from 9 to 12, but I will tell you from 9 to 12, I get so much done. Because I go to Starbucks, I put my headset on, and I get to work. I shut. The only time I answer the phone is when my wife calls because I'm scared of her. But besides that... Um, <laughs> Besides that, I don't answer the phone, I don't answer Skype, I don't do any of that stuff. I just work, put my head down and get stuff done, and I get more done in those three hours than most people get done in like 10 hours. I know that. So you actually downgraded, like, the, instead of the four-hour week thing? Well, it's four-hour week, oh, but oh, you oh, like yeah. three hours. Well, it's like three hours, that, well, and I know Tim Ferriss, he works more than four hours a week. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, the four-hour work week, um, the, you know, it, it just, <laughs> I, have, I have, I mean, you can try to set up as many systems as you can, but the reality is you're still going to have to, even continuity programs, you have to be there managing, at least overseeing employees to make sure they're doing the right thing if they're managing it. So, uh, so how big is your team? You're looking at them. Well, I no actually, way, no way. I have, <laughs> no, I have one full-time person, uh, my virtual assistant, and she, well, I just hired a few more. Okay, she's my right-hand person. She does all of the billing, all of the membership stuff, like all the kind of back-end stuff. Hang and fill it. She handles all that. Um, then I just hired, because I'm going to start a whole new division where it's going to be digital magazine. So I hired two new full time people from the Philippines who are just incredible. Really good people. One full time graphics person and one full time basically organizing all the content. But that's it. Uh, and they're really, really, really inexpensive. Great people. Um, and I've come to the point where I could just find as much leverage in my day and time as possible. And you just don't need a big team. And I, for a while, I started building a bigger team. I had like four or five full-time employees, and I just didn't like it. It was more overhead. It was more stress. I felt myself dealing with, oh, she said this. No, she said this. The drama. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man, I, I, just, I just don't want that. That wasn't fun to me, and I don't need it. So I kind of phased those people out and just got it to that one person that I started. She's been with me for 10 years. Simple. It's just a That's simple. what I was about to ask. So you've been in this business for like ten years, and just now you um, you started having just like a small team, and you yeah. still work only three hours a day. Um, hard work three hours a day, but like I said, in the afternoon, I mean, like today, I have 
two record I'm recording two coaching programs. I have a conference call in about an hour. So I still do some I still work in the afternoons, but it's not as I, I don't really have to. <laughs> uh, that's really cool. So that's that sounds to me like the ideal life. You are passionate about what you're doing. Sure. It makes you a lot of money, so it gives you the freedom to be with your family and um, and do the stuff that you love to do. And then you work a little bit and, and spoil yourself a little bit and get to actually interact with people and build great relationships. Yeah. And so maybe the, the goal is not really retiring, is actually getting to the point where you love your days. Like everything yeah. is awesome. Yeah, I mean, the, the reality is if I retired, what the heck would I do all day? All, my friends all work. You know, <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, I, I, believe me, I could find, I mean, I would, see, I would see movies every day and get massages every day, but even that would get a little bit boring. I, I need the mental stimulation and the challenge. And I've tried, um, I've tried to say, okay, you know, I'm going to phase back and I'm just going to focus on one thing. You know, I'm going to focus on this one thing that brings the most revenue. And I tried that for a few months and I just wasn't happy because for me, what makes me happy is the creativity, creating new products, sales copy. Like I love that and I live for that. Um, and for you or for someone else watching, it might be they love the statistics and they love the numbers. And maybe they're, they'd be better with a product where it requires like a lot of media buying. And, and so, like one of my best students in case studies is Mike Geary, who started as a trainer. He took my program, and now the guy does eight figures a year. Nice with a fitness ebook because he is he he like had an engineering background, so he loves numbers, and he could look at stats and split tests and do that all day. I would shoot myself, but for him it worked. So he found he the model. He found the model that worked for him. So I don't try to force feed my system and say this is for everybody because it's not. Um, but it, that's why you have to, the reality is you have to match up what you're good at and what you really enjoy doing with what's going to make sense for a business model. Let's dive into that because we were talking about recurring revenue. And, um, and this is something that basically you build a community online, right? Of, um, uh, of people that's, who, one, that's one option. There's, there's a lot, okay, but that, we'll okay, go Okay, let's talk about that. So, so let's start with the community, and the reason why I'm jumping into community is because Google just launched uh, a community feature, not sure if you're aware, and, uh, and they just popped up, right? It's like a billion communities, and the problem is there's like a community with, let's say, a thousand members, and maybe ten people are active. Right. Right, and so how do you build a community um, that not is only active, but also happy to pay you money? Um. Well, that's the secret sauce, isn't it? Uh, it is. First of all, there has to be. If, if you have to figure out, is the community going to be about, or kind of around you as the quote-unquote guru or expert, um, or is it going to be around more of a topic where you're not the front person, you're kind of laying back and letting them take over? So you have to figure out what your position is going to be, because that's you know everyone's like, well, I want to build a community, okay, but how is it going to run? You know, how does it look? You have to take take a step back and look at the bigger picture. Um, if it's going to be more of a personality base, like, you know, I mean, that this is my community, it's, you know, people, it's going to be my fans and all this kind of stuff, then you have to rally them behind you. You have to become the leader. And the way you do that is to find the topic that, that other people are passionate about. They share the same passion with you. But you have to say something that really matters and really resonates with them. It can't, what it can't be, the worst sin you could have online, or really in any marketing, is being boring. Right. It can't be... EFAT and a generic, hey, here's social media marketing. Here are the three ways to get a Twitter account. And people would be like, this is awful, boring, generic stuff. Why? What I, always, what I always say is you draw a line in the sand. What's that thing that's going to differentiate you from everyone else? And but the, now the, what you have to remember is when you do this, when you draw a hard line in the sand, there's going to be some people who love you, who will you know, run through walls for you. But on the same, you know, the amount of passion you get, though, is going to turn off a lot of people as well. Because there's two sides to every, every no, you could pick any topic. You could be Mother Teresa. You look on Wikipedia, she had people who hated her. Why? Mother Teresa, right? Um, I mean, I'm Jewish. I don't even, and I know Mother Teresa was like, you know, a good person. Uh, so wh whoever it is, whatever you do, no matter what you think you're doing and how much good you're doing, there's always going to be people who can't stand you. Uh, so that's, you know, look, Justin Bieber, this young kid who's talented, who sings, you know, good for him, great. Uh, and, and there was just a plot that was uncovered that someone wanted to like kill him and murder him and all this. And then people were like, yeah, yeah, kill him. Like what? You know? So you can have just popular, people, Ryan. Come on. Yeah. So, so here's a here's an 18 year old who sings pop songs, and right. there are people who love him, and then there are people who literally want him murdered. So you, you just can't. My point is, you can't please everybody, but you gotta. Yeah, and you've got to pick that 
side and just go for it and be 100% committed to whatever your mission is. Um, and that's the way you attract people and like people. And, and as much as you attract them, again, you're going to repel others, but you have to be okay with that and you have to have thick skin. Um, okay. But, so this is this is good because you're saying first figure out what you stand for, right? Yeah, and then honestly. after you figure out what you stand for, just stand for it. <laughs> and and you know if you know there there's a whole thing in direct marketing about branding. Oh, you should never build a brand. You should build a brand. It's too expensive. And I'm not talking about branding like Coca Cola, but I'm talking about what is what is it you you, you know if you're your brand, if EFAT's the brand, Orion Lee's brand, what does your brand stand for? And you have to be consistent in your brand and in your message and if my brand is you know I'm gonna tell you the truth I'm gonna show you the real way I make money in these different markets um, and I'm not gonna do it by selling you crap and I'm not gonna do it by reciprocating and, and promoting other stuff that I don't believe in then that's what I have to do and I have to be consistent in that same thing you have to do in everyone in their market and if you're in the fitness world or parenting or coaching or auto mechanic whatever it is figure out what your brand is what you stand for and just be that um, and 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 the other thing is being prolific over time as well. And a lot of marketers make the mistake they do this launch, you know, they'll do their product and then they disappear for like three months. And right. all of a sudden the emails start coming again. Oh, I got this great video series, you know. It's like, come on. Like we, we see through your crap, you're gonna launch something soon. But I'm there all the time, every day for my members and for my subscribers, and that's why I think I've had success for over a decade now, because people know I'm not going anywhere. So have your brand be consistent and be prolific as well. And, and it, it doesn't have to be a blog. It can be. It can be a blog and, and Facebook or Twitter or, or G+, Plus, G+, Plus Hangouts. Find your one or two media and stay with it as opposed to trying to have 400 accounts. Because that's, that's another thing. Yeah, because, you know, everyone's like, oh, Tumblr. Oh, my God. Okay, I got to take a course. I got to spend $2,000 on a Tumblr course. And, oh, my God, Pinterest. Now I got to spend $2,000 on a Pinterest course. And, oh, G+. Plus. Right. And all of a sudden they go, and... They tr and they, they start the day and it's like, oh my God, I have to update 700 media things. It's like, no, just pick one or two, go really, really deep, be the best and be there for people and you'll see you're going to find your following. So let me ask you about um, the prolific side of things because you're very generous and you give a lot of stuff that people other people bastard. charge for. What's that? I'm a cheap bastard. Um, well, you're kind of promoting the you know stereotype, but, <laughs> but really, all the stuff that you have out there is is very informative. So how do you know? Okay, you know what this is. I'm gonna give for free to build my authority and be generous and give back to the community. And this stuff I'm gonna charge for. Um, that's a good question. It, you you have to figure out. In terms of the content, you almost have to lay it out. Okay, what's this kind? You know, what what am I gonna? What are people gonna pay for? Um, in general, people will pay for more access to you or to the guru, right? You can almost give away all your content for free, right? You can write a book, and I've I've read books where I'm like, oh my god, this person could have charged two. Th this person could have taken this book, packaged it differently, put it in a, in a three ring binder, and charged two thousand dollars for it, literally. Um, but you'll but people will still pay them a thousand, two thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars a day for their coaching because they want that personal instruction. So that's one thing you can always. Hey, here's all of my information for free. If you want to talk with me on the phone, excuse me, you want me to design a fitness program for you, you want me to write a marketing plan, then that's going to cost more. So that's one way to do it. Um, I, I tend to do my front end material that I give away for free tends to be more, uh, a little bit more broad. Uh, uh, you know, so I might say, okay, here's here are three continuity income models. You know, a membership site, a newsletter, and a software program. And give one or two tips on each. But you know, if you want the full six-hour training program on how to build, because that's great. Okay, membership site, awesome. I want to do it. Now what? Well, right. <laughs> here's my program. I'm going to show you how to get the domain name, what software to use, how to install it, how to create content updates, how to automate it, how to get, you know. So I, I kind of tease a little bit, but I give enough where people will go through the content. They'll be like, man, even if I don't pay him, that's really good stuff. So that you know, it's almost like you're you're giving away the why. And you're selling the how, if that makes sense. Yes. Okay. So, in that topic, I've heard that uh, people would pay more for strategies than they will for the how tos because the how tos are all you know out there. How to buy a domain? There's like a billion YouTube videos about that. But the strategy uh -huh. of like, okay, you got the domain. Now here is how you put it all together. That's what they're gonna pay for. Well, well, yes and no. Um, I think the the key is when you combine those two and you 
uh, all right, let me let me back up for a second. <clears throat> Let's throw out a topic. Let we'll we'll kind of brainstorm a little bit here. Parenting. Okay, parenting. Um, all right. Here's here's what some people would do. They'd say, okay, you know, I, I'm a psychologist and I work with parents. I know parenting, and my product is going to be, you know, 101 parenting tips. All right, that could, that would be like a typical product, and I'll charge you know 50 bucks for it. Fine. So that's more like this whole just bunch of stuff, bunch of how-to, right? A lot of tactical kind of stuff. Whereas someone else can take basically the same information, repackage it, and say, I'm going to teach you the. Uh, it's a system now. It's an eight-week parenting system where every week it's going to be another lesson that starts at the beginning and every week progresses. So by the end, there's some results. And I have a formula, and it's basically how to um, whatever the benefit is. So how to the benefit is raise a better child in X number uh, in some time. So maybe it could be in eight weeks, in six weeks, in one month, in three months, whatever it is. Um, by utilizing and whatever it is you're teaching, by utilizing this, you know, ultimate parenting system. So you, you just fill in your formula. But that's what really sells now. Now years ago, a lot of the you know hundred and one different kettlebell workouts, all these kind of things could sell as well. But now I think people are overwhelmed, they're busy, and they just want the system. Just give me, you know, if you look on online uh, on infomercials, one of the biggest selling systems is P90X because it's right. a ninety day system. Okay. It's not just it wouldn't have sold well if it's you know here's 20 different workouts. Yeah. I mean, they even tried to do another program called 10 Minute Trainer, which is a bunch of like 10 minute workouts. Didn't do as well because it's not a system. So I sell systems. That's why my 1K per day formula, it's 1K per day formula. It's a formula, it's a system. Here's what to do day one, here's what to do day two. And by the end, you can have this program where you could earn up to $1,000 a day. Um, so that's the difference. Um, so I think you kind of combine. And that's, that's how to, it's tactical and it's strategy, and you combine it together. Boom, we're on fire today. What's that? You are. <laughs> we're on fire. Come on, G plus people. So okay, so that actually leads you to the simplest simplified product model. Yeah. Okay. What is it? You gotta keep drinking my water. Um <laughs> so essentially it, it's really looking at your products as a, in three different things. Okay. The, I, I I simplified it to three categories. There's a product which is like the under hundred dollar product, all right. So it's going to be ninety nine dollars and under, and that could be an ebook, an an online video, an online video series, a couple of ebooks, a couple of different things that you can package together. Ninety nine dollars and under. That's going to be one category, all right. So everything you think of, put it in that one category because you have to think in terms of pricing. A second category is going to be I'm I'm calling a big ticket. Now big ticket, a lot of people said, well, it's you know thousand dollars and up, but again. This is where people kind of give half truths because in the internet marketing world that might be true, but if you're in a softer topic niche like, par like parenting is a little bit softer of a topic, knitting, gardening, you know, housework, cleaning your car, softer topics. The reality is to sell a thousand dollar information products, you know how to do a better sweater for your grandchild. It's good luck selling that. You right. might sell one or two, but come on. The real I I know the reality. And the reality is they're really hard to sell. Um, so for that market, $99 might be on the higher end, or 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 199 bucks. So really, I'm so that's what I'm saying. 99 and up is going to be your big ticket. So you've got low ticket, big ticket, and then you've got um, the third category, which is recurring revenue, continuity income, a membership site, a software program, a newsletter, and of the month, like a DVD or a CD of the month. So I like to try to have whatever market I'm in, a product or multiple products in every single category. I think. If you just are in one, if you're just in the low price, and you're just selling twenty dollars ebooks. I think you're losing a lot of potential money because there are there are always going to be a percentage between five to ten percent of your customers who want the best and who want more of you. And a mistake I made early on was pricing my products too low, and my clients started to go elsewhere. They're like, I want to buy more stuff, and Ryan's not giving me any opportunity. Let me go buy something else. And and I and that was a big mistake, and I learned my lesson. Um, so that that's the simplification of just and of just doing those and the whole marketing funnel where people start with free or low price and gradually move down is dead. It doesn't it is, it, okay. it is dead because I get a lot of my customers come in, their first product they buy could be a thousand dollars. Or the first thing they do is they, they join up for my membership site. So it's not true anymore. It, it used to be in the case where you couldn't afford to keep hitting you couldn't afford to keep mailing customers because it costs money to mail them. 
But now with the internet, it's so inexpensive and people are coming in from all different angles. So that's why I like to offer them different options. And so it's okay. So if I got you correctly, is you uh, you offer everything to everyone. So those people who want to pay the lowest amount, there's a product for that. Those who want to get more, they can offer that. And those who want direct access to you, there's an offer for that. And basically, you're kind of like putting out a net of ways for people to access you. Right. Now, obviously, people are going to come in and see one offer first. They're not going to come in and see 30 offers. I mean, they may, depending on which way they get to your site, if they come through a home page or if you have one, only one site that sells everything. So there is that issue to deal with. But in general, they're going to see one offer at a time. And yeah, I, I put out different offers and different products uh, because people will. I mean, I had someone, I, I did a $1,000 one-day workshop and I had a bunch, like five or six people because I only had, I limited that to 30 because um, it was really small and I didn't record it. So I was five or six people, that was the first time they'd ever bought any of my products. And it was a $1,000 in-person workshop. So... You just don't know where they're going to come in, but I like giving them different options. Um, so I also heard that um, there's a lot of the, the same effort that you would put in selling like a low priced, uh, low ticket item will, will be the same effort that you'll put into selling a higher ticket item. So right. why don't just go to the higher ticket item right away? <laughs> exactly. Because uh, people who've never sold a lot of products online, I've, I've sold a lot over the years and been behind the scenes of you know tens of millions of dollars of product sales, so I've seen it. Um, and you think that okay, I have a product, it's great, um, and I you know I'm thinking of charging 100 bucks, but I don't know if I'll sell that many. So if I charge only 10 dollars, I'm going to sell 30 times as many. I don't make more money because I'm 30. And the reality is, you're not going to just because it's a lower price does not mean you're going to sell more. And and often it's the opposite because you might actually sell more at 100 dollars because it has a higher perceived value. You know, it's the same thing. Two people, a person could walk into a, sh a store. They could be two T-shirts, two white plain T-shirts. One could be five bucks. The other one, twenty-five dollars. And I guarantee you, a percentage, maybe even a large percentage, are going to take the twenty-five dollars shirt because why? They're going to assume twenty-five dollars shirt is better. It's just why? Human nature. There's a, and, why? There's a, and, go ahead. Yeah, it, it could be the same exact material, but you assume that all right, twenty-five bucks is going to be better. Um, I like, uh, here's a really powerful strategy. Now, I shouldn't share this, but I'm going to share it because I'm a giver. Why do I keep seeing uh, some guy's face popping up on my screen in front of me? Um, <laughs> so this is the, where the blue box is coming. You can just click on my face and you'll only see me. Oh, because other people keep... Yeah, every time someone makes a noise, it jumps to that other person. Oh, but this God. is kind of like a Q&A time, so they're going to unmute and, and, uh, and start communicating with you. But let's talk about this little... Thing. Oh shit! I gotta take questions. Okay. Um, <laughs> strategy, so was, strategy first. You had. Oh, screw make, that. Um, might might better sooner. I had everything planned here. All right. Um, what I was gonna say is, I like what's called like a, a to anchor a heavy price. So, give me give me another market. Um, vitamins. Okay, vitamins. Um, so let's say you're selling uh, supplements and you have two packages. What you do is you come out with the first package first. So you say, okay, this is the package, and it's five hundred dollars. It includes the multis, includes the fish oil, includes this and that. Okay, and it's a five hundred dollar package, and you and you promote to your list five hundred dollar package. Five, you keep saying five hundred dollar package. You hit them a couple of times with that, and the people who want that are going to get that right away. And then, but what you're doing is you're anchoring that five hundred dollar price. So now, when you come back a week or two later, hey, I understand some of you. Can't afford to spend five hundred. I understand we we've, we've created the low the light version of it where it's only one of each and it's only ninety nine bucks. So now all of a sudden they're comparing the five hundred to ninety nine and you're going to sell more than ninety nine as well. You scoop up kind of the people who want the premium and then you, you anchor it anchor the five hundred and get more spent buying at ninety nine because if you just came out with ninety nine, the people would have spent five hundred are just going to buy the ninety nine because you give them no other choice. And the people who weren't going to buy, it, you know, who couldn't afford it. There's no price comparison. So, like, well, 99 sounds kind of expensive. Compared to 500, it doesn't, but 99 on its own does. So, that's a really, really powerful strategy. So, it's easier to go down, actually, than to go up. So, you say, yes. start with the higher, highest amount, see how many people you can get for that. What if people come back and say, hey, if I had known that you would sell for 99, I wouldn't have bought it for 500. Well, it's it, it, you have to have a different product. It can't be the same. Okay. It's it's got to be a different version, because that, that's not fair. Right. Again, you, you always you have to treat your customers how you want to be treated. So, 
you just and that is the golden rule that everybody seems to forget online, right? <laughs> they all seem to forget that. I know, and I I live by that. I mean, my dad's on my email list. My sister, my whole family, all my friends from high school, they all get my emails, and they always comment on them. So I'm very careful what I say. So let me ask, who has kids in the background? Is that you, Ryan? That is not me. I'm at, I'm at my office, so there's no kids. Interesting. Okay. So uh, let's do the first question from Carlos. Carlos, you want to unmute? You have plenty. I, I just, I just. Number one, thank you for for holding this hangout, Ryan. Thank you for taking this question. It's me with the kids. I'm sorry. That's why I, I uh, <laughs> muted me earlier. Uh, I just wanted to know because uh, you, you know you're you're validating a lot of the stuff that I've been reading. I'm curious because I think I have a theory behind this. What books? What books do you read? <laughs> and I'll mute myself right now. Thanks. Um, well, the question is, what books are the 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 answer is really what books don't I read? Um, <laughs> literally, I I, I read uh, well. I read, I'll show you, um, I don't actually read them anymore. I just go on iTunes. Oh. Yeah, I got my iTunes, and every, like this one I'm reading right now called uh, uh, Double Double. Uh, these, they're all business books. Everything here is just, you can see all, it's all business and marketing and self-improvement. And, and I listen on double speed, so I get twice as much information because I'm crazy like that. Me and uh, <laughs> I, listen to two, I listen to two or three a week. Well, every time I'm driving, even if I'm like helping out around the house, if I'm making the beds, um, I put them on. And when I work out, I listen to them. So, I mean, literally everything. Like, you know, big strategy stuff like Seth Godin um, to Brian Tracy to tactical web marketing stuff. Uh, so, uh, everything. <laughs> everything business. And, and yeah, I, I tend not, I don't read any, uh, any fiction anymore. Do you? What's your favorite podcast? You know, I don't listen to many podcasts. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I, every once in a while, like uh, you know, this guy I know. Well, Pat Flynn was on Dave Garland's thing. I'll, I'll, I've listened to a couple of those. Um, the E Myth. Like it depends what mood I'm in. You know, like if I'm if I'm building a new business or a company where it's I want it completely automated, then I'll listen to E Myth for motivation. If I'm um, if I feel kind of stuck. And I'm not sure what to do. I don't know what to do tomorrow. Then I'll listen to like Seth Godin for inspiration. So it just depends. But not a, not a ton of podcasts. I I found that sometimes they're not the greatest, <laughs> or the content's not good, or I don't know. One of the questions that Carlos had was that um, how do you if you give so much stuff for free, how do you make other people not steal from you or emulate you and take what you give for free and sell it? Well, they do. <laughs> uh, they do all the time. Uh, that's just part of the game, you know. It's part. It's part of the, It's part of it, and it's fine. Um, I live in abundance, and if you want to steal my stuff, that's fine. You're going to be a cheap imitator because you're not going to be delivering the real thing. I mean, I, there's one guy. Every time I do a blog post, you know, a day or two later, he basically does the exact same topic. I could show a video, and a day or two later, he'll do the exact same video. I'm like, come on. Um, <laughs> But it's it's you know it's a, it's a form of flattery, right? It's just nothing you can do about that. And I'm not going to hold back and give my members less because I'm afraid some jerk is going to steal my information. So I can I, I don't remember who said this, but I can innovate faster than they can copy. So bring it on. Nice. It's yeah. also like you know that they don't think like you. So it's you no. know the people who want to get your brain have to come to you. It's second rate, and eventually people are going to find me anyway. So um, they'll see. And and well, those guys, you know, they're they're fake, and and it's just you can tell when someone's being real, and eventually they get caught, and and it's fine. Stuart, you are muted. You're there, muted. We yeah, there we go. Yep, got it now. Um, I want to thank you first, Ryan, for letting us borrow your brain. That's the most. <laughs> we that. only have two things: time and expertise, and you're giving us both. Um, I had my own little model here that I wanted to see if uh, you would agree with. Um, number one, creating authority on whatever topic you're on. Mine happens to be um, an off-the-wall niche in real estate. Um, creating authority by giving away a lot of information and helping a lot of people solve a lot of problems. And then secondarily, coming up with a product, in my case, um, property and eventually giving them the full deal on the property so they can go and try to make the actual transaction. And thirdly, offering uh, a paid coaching system so that the property is the small t 
the authorities free properties the small ticket the coaching's the big ticket does right. that seem like a reasonable suggestion yeah I mean obviously it look it's gonna do, real estate is a very every market's crowded right so my only suggestion is in the real estate world you know you have to figure out why am I gonna go to you versus every other why am I gonna go to you instead of buying Dean Graziosi's products or sure. you know the flip the house guy like you just have to find what the big differentiator is and maybe it's your story it's because you went from zero to X about or maybe it's a certain niche within it or maybe it's a certain location or maybe it's just foreclosures or whatever it is but there's I think there's gotta be um, something that's gonna differentiate you <clears throat> because otherwise you get the best coaching program it's gonna be really hard to stand out in a busy market um, I always recommend <clears throat> a little exercise you can do is how do you niche it down uh, to two levels so for example, real estate can be kind of the big overall. You know, sure. how do you niche it down? So maybe, it, and and what is your thing? Let's let's just brainstorm for a minute here. What is your kind of hook? Uh, I'm 37 years uh, experience for one in creative real estate, uh, doing problem solving real estate for people who've got themselves hung up uh, one way or another. Aunt Martha gave them a, a half half empty shopping center that nobody can lease and is obsolete. Okay. Um, so, so we solve that problem. So, so you, you specialize oh, yeah. in commercial. Okay. So, uh, so in, uh, usually it's uh, it's uh, income earning of one sort or another. Uh, well, but right there you're differentiating. So you've got real estate. You're going down one thing to commercial, right? So now all of a sudden you eliminate all the, the residential. So if like Dean Graziosi residential, hey, if you want residential, go go to Dean, go to someone else. So now you're sure. commercial. And then it sounded to me like it's someone who already owns commercial, and it's someone who's having trouble with it or filling it or earning money with residents. So right there to me and I, without doing any research and looking at all the competitors but it sounds like you could find a little slice right in there and hey if you own commercial you're investing in commercial and you're having trouble with the commercial I'm the guy for you. Uh, I, I, and I don't think the, the one thing though that you started with Stuart uh, is that you have 37 years experience which which isn't it? It sounds impressive, but sometimes people are like, well, I don't care, because it, it, it's and as awful as it sounds, sometimes people can play that against you, because they'd be like, oh, he's been doing yeah. it forever. He his stuff's old. You know, he's not new school. Yeah, he doesn't absolutely. know how to fill it using the internet. So I almost wouldn't say that. I would talk about your success stories as opposed to 37 years. That that can it, as sad as it is, that that's almost a negative now. Um, so I'd find that little slice in you. Absolutely, you can go in and you can dominate and be. You know, I I like to find markets where you can come in and be number one. But yeah, yeah. That's also also provide people properties they can buy for almost nothing that earn a high rate of return. But at any rate, I thank you, and especially that insight into the experience idea is valuable. And I think you're absolutely right. It sounds like I've been around too long. So <laughs> yeah. and and I like the uh, I like the fact you're wearing like the cowboy hat because no, and it's true because that. Like if you kind of brand yourself and like get a cartoon with you with the hat and that's like your brand, people don't forget that because there's not a lot of people look with that look. So maybe that's and maybe you're just wearing it now because you didn't cut your hair or whatever. But I mean that could be like you know that could be like your look. Uh, Ye Fat knows that I can go into a hangout, which I do a lot without this hat, and nobody uh -huh. recognizes me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd be, this I, is I my this is hat. now my brand. Yeah, I would I would brand it, and everything's going to be around that hat, and and, yeah. and that story of you know I'm assuming you're from the south or. Midwest. I'm here. I'm here in California. We had great uh -huh. big ranches, and I actually worked ranches when I was younger. So awesome! So you can play that whole thing in, and hey, if a if a rancher could do this in commercial real estate, imagine what you can do, right? Oh, thank you. That's that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Ye fat knows I'm a I'm a good sponge. So awesome. thank you very much, Ryan. I'll I'll mute out here. Okay. Thanks, Derek. One of the questions uh, in the stream, Ryan, is where do you find people like good people in the Philippines? How do you go about that? Um, I went to a company, and man, I can't remember the name of it. If you give me one sec, let me just look this up. Uh, I went to uh, Virtual Staff Finder. Virtual Staff Finder. Virtual Staff Finder. Staff Finder. And it, it, they, there, there's different resources. I use them. And they were incredible. So you pay a couple hundred bucks, maybe it's three hundred or four hundred, and they interview all the people and they give you the top three people. They weed out everyone else, go through all the resumes, and then you're left with three people, and then you interview them and hire them. So they did. I, I just used them like two months ago, and I loved them. 
and the guy Chris uh, Drucker, Chris Ducker, great guy. Mm -hmm. um, really liked him, like what they're doing. So that's the resource I just used that I like. Awesome. Uh, I have a second question, probably a little bit more topical, though. C could I ask it? Yeah, go for it um, and introduce yourself. Oh, hi. Well, my name is Anthony Park. Um, I, I don't, I, I, in these hangouts, I usually come in on my, in my regular account. It's a little. Uh, yeah, just, it's a little low. <clears throat> oh, sorry. <clears throat> I'm having troubles with my audio driver, but. Uh, my name is Anthony Park, and I, I'm a registered investment advisor. And I've been trying to figure out ways to, to do what you do with what I know. And I'm racking my brains, and I'm having trouble trying to figure out how I would do that. You know, I, I have a, a fairly decent practice, but it's, you know, it's nobody knows about it, <laughs> right? So I'm trying to I'm trying to get this out there on the internet in 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 uh, um, a more profitable way. So, really know how to do that. I, well, I don't know what you're starting with. What do you have now? Do you have a website? Uh, no, working on it currently. Okay. Uh, well, that's number one is create, you got to create that home base. And it could be, I'm a big fan of WordPress, creating a WordPress based site so you can always update it with new content. That's what, that's the reality. I don't do any SEO or have any SEO people. Um, I just update, Google wants new fresh content. Um, so I'm always updating my site with new stuff. And then, Going where they are. If you're a financial advisor, where are the people who are going to hire you going? What sites are they on? What groups are they in? What right. Facebook page are they on? And getting active in the community. It's just what EFAT's done. I mean, just doing this through Google+. Plus. She's on. She's hanging out. She's talking to people. And she's building a following. And it's really as simple as that. It's a lot of these small things you do each day. And I'm just going to give myself a little plug. I um, I created a program for, for people like you. It's mm -hmm. called Hire Jill. H-I-R-E. J I L L dot com, and it's a software program, and it's, there's hundreds and hundreds of little tasks you can do each day, and I actually assign point values for them. So all I do is log in. I don't even have to think about. It. I'm like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this, and it starts building the buzz online. Uh, and it's, I price it like 19 bucks a month. So I mean, that that's I built that for me, so I don't have to think about it, and I have someone who updates it every day with new resources, but. Yeah, it's it's building that you got to get that site, and then you just got to get out there. And and I'm a big fan of syndicating content, of getting it on other video sources and other places that publish articles and guest blogging. And it's the little little it's the little things you're going to do each day. Uh, but, but like I told um, who was that was just on, on, um, Stuart, right? Stuart with that. Uh, you you got to find that niche too. Financial advising is just so broad. So. You know, maybe you could niche it down, and it might be different than your practice. Your online thing might be a little bit different. Maybe online, it's you can do it by sex. Maybe it's just for men or just for women. Mm -hmm. Or maybe niche it down further. It's just for men 50 and older. Hey, right. if you're 50 and older, man, I understand you. You have different needs, you know. Or it could be 20 year olds. Whatever the. Or it could be just for you're the financial guy for for. A <sighs> Whoa! What the hell was that? Um, <laughs> this is a little. This is a little frightening. This Google Plus. Um, <laughs> you know, people moaning into the camera. So yeah, I, I, I would niche it down, blog, and then go hard. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Ryan, one of the things you were talking about is uh, know, there's a there... on you, moaning kind of kind of psychopaths you have on here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Dark screen and some. Uh... Yeah. I kept thinking <laughs> that's like. Effects. <laughs> I admit it. That was me. I unmuted by accident. Okay, well, I don't know what you guys are you're slaughtering cows in your thing over there. Okay. So you, know, <laughs> you guys are, you know, scaring Ryan from engaging via Hangouts. Right. <laughs> literally in front. Um, okay, so what, do we have more? Uh, more we have more questions. So the, the <laughs> yes. we're going to talk about was um, compelling content and traffic. So it sounds like, you know, uh, we're talking about engagement in the membership site, and we're talking about content, and a lot of it you give for free, and then um, traffic, how to get people to your content. So what is the number one secret to getting more traffic? More traffic. Uh, number one, well, there's, there's a lot of ways, right? Number there's one. Number one. Well, okay, if you have a budget, buying ads, right? That's the number one way. If you If you know your offer converts, now it's a whole different world, traffic buying and media buying um, and getting into Google. But if you have money and you know your offer converts and you know your lifetime customer value, then you're off to the races. You can get unlim virtually unlimited traffic. However, most people don't have an offer that converts or don't know if it converts and they're like, well, I'm just starting out. You know, 
and I just have a blog, so I'm not sure what to do. So then I'd recommend free strategies. And the, the best source of warm traffic, there's a difference between warm and cold traffic. Cold traffic is putting a banner on some random site. Someone clicks on it, comes to you. They've never heard of Ryan Lee before. They have no idea who I am. That's cold traffic. Warm traffic is EFAT sending a, an email to a list saying, hey, you guys know me, you trust me, you've got to check out Ryan Lee's site. That's warm because now all of a sudden they, they kind of know about me and they're, they're being warmed up. So warm traffic is a great source. And affiliates, having other people recommend you. Um, that's You can get the most traffic for free uh, and more, all warm leads, people ready to buy or at least opt into your list. So that that's the best, to be honest with you. Uh, but aside from that, if you have no affiliates, you have no one who's going to mail for you, then it's just kind of next phase is all of these smaller things. It's I, I concentrate on one. To be honest, I like Facebook. Um, I would go on Facebook. I would start the fan page. I would start interacting and joining groups. But this and, is, Ryan, because you don't know Google Plus and the power of Google Plus yet. Yeah, not yet. We not have yet. to convert you for that. <laughs> yes. Still, well, after I hear moaning and all these screaming in the background, I'm <laughs> a little scared of this. Uh, but so whatever it is, so maybe it's Google Plus or maybe it's Facebook, but uh, the one thing I like about Facebook, if you want to start playing with buying ads, it's very easy to do, and you could super focus. So um, Stuart maybe is wants to do real estate. He could like zoom in to, hey, I know most of my real estate people are 50 to 60 year old men in from like Wyoming who were like farmhand, and you could like specifically target traffic just to them, and you could start building your list that way. So that's why I like because Facebook is so easy, as opposed to Google where you know they don't like squeeze pages, they don't like certain markets, so it's a little tougher to play in that world. Uh, so the, that's that's where I would focus. So two more uh, two more questions. First, Blair. Okay. Uh, related to uh, membership sites, you know, where you pay seven ninety five, nine ninety five, or whatever, four ninety five a month to uh, be a member of. Uh -huh. uh, I would like to see what your thoughts are in your system related to membership sites. And then the other one is is like a, a service oriented. Like I have a credit repair and consulting company. So uh, <laughs> how, how would that fit in with these uh, couple scenarios versus uh, an actual product like, you know, or an info product or something like you do? Well, I, I'm still, I'm, I'm not actually sure what the question is. Um, what specifically what do you want to know about memberships or... Okay, okay. Uh, like, for example, your system, you have a system that you use, correct? And, and Would your system be able to transfer over into membership sites, or is it only one-time buy uh, type products? My system, well, I get people into both. So, and I have people who are in my membership site still buy my one-time products, and vice versa. So, for me, it all kind of, it's all part of it. Um, so, I'll have premium, pro I call them premium products that are not included in the membership site. So they'd have to pay for those. Um, I usually give them a nice discount, uh, but those are those to me are two separate things. But it all intertwines in my market. Okay, and in the membership, then of course they're it's it's spelled out what they get each month or what they're you know and that yeah. kind of stuff. Okay, absolutely. Um, and there's different ways to run it. You know, there's there's more of a membership type community where there's discussion forums and they're interacting, um, and maybe you're giving smaller pieces of content. Maybe it's one update a week that's you know five or ten minutes of video or if it's a three or four page PDF so that's you know one type or there's one where I used to run the inner circle where I did every week a full live webinar training just kinda like this Q&A special guest um, really in-depth training um, so there's and that was a higher price because it was more interaction with me so there's different ways you can do it hmm. uh, not one is not better than the other uh, it just depends on what your model is and how many people you want to reach and you know if you want to go higher price or lower price but, but I like the idea that it includes certain time with you like one on one with you I think that's a, a yeah. Well, what, what was it? yeah well with me it was EFOT. You're, you're talking about EFOT and she's selling a brand what's her brand you know what what is it that people come to EFOT she can get all give all this stuff free but what you probably are working towards I hope you are EFOT someday is that people are going to want to pay to spend time with you you know yeah, yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm <laughs> to get to that point, it's a, uh, it's it's very interesting because I'm like Ryan. I really love helping, and it's so it's very difficult to say, okay, well, if you want to talk to me, here's my PayPal. First, you know, pay this fee, and now let's look at the clock and 
you know. That's hard for you, your personality, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, it's still like you, you have to get over that because it's still I would love to just do everything for free too, but you also have to value your time. Um, and I get emails all the time. People say, and I wrote blog posts about this. Like, for some, I just can't say when people say I want to pick your brain because that to me is a relationship where there's no give and take. They're purely going to take. Um, yeah. And I'd rather have someone come to me and say, Ryan, I like what you're doing. I respect your time. I'll pay for your time but because I, I want to know what you know. Uh, but, yeah, I don't take on many one-on-one -on -one clients anymore. And if I do, like every once in a while, I'll email my list say, hey, I'm opening up three slots. It's an app. It's two 30-minute slots for 1000 um, bucks, and I sell those slots out in like two minutes because people know I don't do it very often. So, And that's another another advantage of branding yourself is because there's only one you. Like There, there could be a million sites on social media and a million on Google Plus Hangouts. I'm sure there will be in, in the next yeah. month, but there's only going to be one EFAT. There's only going to be one Ryan Lee. There's only one, you know, Martha Stewart, Donald Trump. So no matter, it's so it's not. It's more than about just the information. It's about that person and the connection. And that's why I'm a big fan of personal branding, um, and and being consistent in your messaging because then people are attracted to you. Gotcha. So two more questions. I know we have four more minutes. One is how long does it take the average person to get to a thousand dollar a day? The second uh, one coming now. <laughs> I, I I mean. I, I don't from know what your the membership is. side, right? From, from look, mo the reality is most people don't do anything. That's okay, true. no matter with my training, people because and, and it's usually not because they don't have the time. I teach all the tactics. Here's how to set up your site. Here's exactly how to upload a video. Here's how. To, I mean, I literally show them what to do. But a lot of people, their head gets in the way, or they get so stuck in their idea, and I'll be like, "It's not going to work," and they'll be like, "Well, no, I, I think it will." Listen to me. It will not work. People are not going to pay a thousand dollars for you know how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah, but my way is the best. So most people have don't... the McDonald of peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, but but I have. I mean, like David Garland took my program, and since he was already building a reputation online, he did it within like a week or two. He was doing the thousand dollar a day. Um, there are other people that could take a few months, but I, I I've never said my stuff is get rich quick. Uh, right. I mean, I try to make money as fast as possible and teach my clients as fast as possible, but the reality is most people are not going to start earning $30,000 a month within a week. It's just not the reality. I mean, otherwise every single person would do it. It's, it's the people who have that unique hook and who really want to go for it and who are dedicated to it. Uh, but yeah, I, I think within, within weeks you can start making money. And even if you sell one premium product a week at the beginning, at even if it's a low price $200 product, you sell one a week, just one a week, that's $800 a month. For, people, for a lot of people, that's life changing. Yeah, that's major. That's that's a change in a lifestyle, actually. You and know? that's one a week of a low price. So imagine you now sell two a week. Two a week. That's four hundred dollars a week. That's sixteen hundred a month. You sell one a day at, at you know for five days a week. That's a thousand dollars a week. That's four thousand. That's almost fifty grand a year. So then that's why I like premium price products because the numbers add up pretty quickly. So Ryan, you, we have uh, two more minutes, and I don't want—I know you have uh, a different yeah, I gotta, I have meeting. Yeah. So I just want to say a thank you, and I want to plug your program. It's RyanLee.com, and he's giving an entire webinar for free. Uh, it's like an hour long, I think, of how to make a thousand dollars a day online, yeah. and um, and also um, since Ryan just said that he's answering his own emails. You know, go to Google Plus, start interacting with him. He's going to come back and respond, and hopefully do more hangouts. And um, and don't pick his brain, but you know, <laughs> to him, engage, be friends. <laughs> yeah, de definitely go to go to RyanLee.com and just enter your email in there. And I'm always updating. I'm always giving lots and lots of free content. Um, we also have a big event coming up, an online event called the Continuity Summit. It's going to be our fourth one. And uh, in one of the other ones, we built an actual school in Kenya. We don't. We got enough money. Uh, donated. So this year I'm pledging to build another one. So what I'm doing is I'm donating 50%, half of all my profits from all ticket sales of this online event is going to build another school. Um, so so go, go on my list and I'll keep you guys posted. We're going to have 20 hours of content all about recurring revenue. So if you're interested in recurring revenue membership sites, it's going to be awesome. Basically what Ryan says, if you want to work three hours a day, get massages, see movies, <laughs> and spend time with your family, Go to RyanLee.com and put your yes. email in there. Yeah, well, I appreciate you having me on it, and, and I appreciate the questions, guys, and you guys uh, taking time out of your day for this. This was fun, so thank you. Thank you, Ryan.